Hi everyone, welcome to our St Luke's and St Paul's Church at Home video for the third Sunday of Epiphany. I'm Reverend Matt Malins, Vicar of St Luke's and St Paul's and it's great to have you joining with us. Just a couple of things to mention and to notices before we start. Um, first of all, if this service is always available on DVD, if you'd rather receive it as a disc rather than trying to access it over the internet, please let me know. Or if you know of someone else who would benefit from that, please give me a ring. Uh, contact me through the usual channels and I will add them to my distribution list. The second thing to mention is our services in person in the building are still closed. Uh, we as a DCC met this week and discussed uh, our decision to close our buildings again and we've decided to keep them closed for the safety reasons. Uh, we're still waiting on the virus numbers to reduce and we will open our buildings as soon as we feel it is uh, safe and practical. But for now I'm afraid we are still doing things remotely so please do bear with us. As usual, we shall be using our green service books today uh, and hopefully you should have a copy of that. If you want or a copy of any of the liturgy, liturgy, do give me a shout and I will get that to you. So let's begin. The Lord be with you and also with you. So we're now going to sing our first hymn. say our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to enter into a time of confession. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Before we pray together, let's take our usual moment of silence just to let God speak to us about those things that we need to say sorry for. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Moving away from our time of confession, we're now going to move into a time of celebration and praise. So we're going to use the words of the Gloria to celebrate the wonder of God. So let's say together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're now going to have our reading and our sermon. And our sermon today is going to be brought to us by Barry. And we're looking at worship today and how we can worship together as a church, especially in these lockdown times. So please sit down and enjoy. Our reading this morning is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, everyone. Good to be with you this morning. Matt said last week as he was uh, preaching that how difficult it was to preach to uh, an empty church. Just how, imagine how difficult it is to preach to a computer screen with a picture of you on it, sat in your study. I don't find it an easy thing to do at all, but here we go. We're looking at the next stage of our series, looking at how uh, our life as a church and the, the God's word can help us face this difficult situation that we're going through at the moment. And what a situation it's been, not just for most of the last year, but 
on into the foreseeable future too. Thank goodness for the vaccine programme, some light at the end of the tunnel. But so often as we begin to glimpse the light at the end of the tunnel, the darkness can seem all the darker. New variants of the virus have appeared um, and they sow uncertainty into our fledgling hopes of a, of a cure for all this problem. So how do we keep going? Where can we find help in such uncertain situations that can so easily seem so far beyond our control? The reading set for today, Psalm 21, is a good place to start, looking as it does at dangerous situations facing God's people many centuries ago. The psalm is prefixed a song of ascents, usually taken to mean uh, a psalm used on or for journeys up to Jerusalem or for the, to the temple for a major, major festivals. Psalm 121 gives encouragement to pilgrims facing journeys on foot through dangerous areas, promising God's protection, not just on their current journey, be it actual or symbolic, uh, but through the whole of their lives. I want to look first of all at what the psalm has to say, and then briefly at what hope it can give us as God's people today as we face our own difficult and dangerous journey. The psalm starts by setting uh, a basis of where it's going to be going, and the promise that it holds. In verse 1, the psalmist writes, I lift my eyes to the hills. Remember, this pilgrim is going to Jerusalem. It's going to be a journey through rough, hilly country where robbers can hide, waiting to pounce on unsuspecting travellers. And he poses the question, in the face of all of that, where does my help come from? What can I do in this situation? Dangerous times, dangerous places, a dangerous journey. So the pilgrim looks for some comfort, something to give courage for the journey. You can sense in those words uh, the fear and the hesitation uh, when he focuses on the hills, the place where danger lurks. But immediately he then goes on to look beyond the danger that the hills represent to the one who created the hills, whose power is infinite. And he answers his own question, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. A real declaration of faith and confidence in the God he trusts in and whom he is travelling to worship. The rest of the psalm is phrased in the voice of a companion, thought by some commentators to be a priestly voice speaking blessing and assurance, who gives confirmation and justification for that statement of faith and trust. The next six verses are in pairs, and they use a, a poetic device typical of the psalms, repetition and expansion, uh, intended to emphasise the point that's being made. So, for instance, in verse 3, he says, He who keeps you will not slumber. And then in verse 4, Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Repetition and expansion, not just you, but the whole of Israel. It's the God of Israel who's protecting you. And then in verse 5, The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Once again, repetition and expansion. In verse 7, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. And verse 8, the Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now, both now and forevermore. So not only banging home the point of God's presence and protection, but also in mentioning those two extremes, day and night, coming and going, now and forever, uh, suggesting that the cover is not just at those two extreme ends, but for everything in between. God's provision, God's love, God's protection, his companionship is there on every journey uh, of our lives and it's promised from beginning to end. As the Bible says, el says elsewhere, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the psalm assures us, that if we, assures us that if we walk with God, the one who has called us into relationship with him, remember, he says, you will be my people and I will be your God. We, we will know his protection we will know his provision from whatever danger or evil we may encounter. Whatever threat the created order may present, we have the promise of the creator of all, uh, all that is seen and unseen, that he will be with us, that he will watch over us, that he will keep us. That means guard us and protect us. As Paul reminds us in Romans 8, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I think in all of that we can see clear parallels to our own situation. We face danger every time we leave the house at the moment. That's why we're told to stay at home. And it's so easy to get overwhelmed by that simple truth, isn't it? News bulletins are full of dire warnings and of horror stories, clearly and rightly intended in the face of many doubters, to get the point home that this virus is real, it's dangerous, it's potentially fatal. In the face of all this, it's so easy to focus entirely on the problem, the danger, just like the pilgrim looking at the hills. But just like him, we need to lift our eyes beyond that, to look to the creator of the universe, who has promised to be with us, and to keep us in his care. For him, nothing is impossible. Nothing is beyond his control. Nothing will get in the way of his love and care for us. This is not to suggest that we're in some way miraculously protected from the virus or from any other danger that we face. We know all too well that dangers and evil are everywhere, and we're subject to them just as everyone else is. But we have God's promise that we are not alone, we are not helpless. We have hope for the future, despite the problems of the present. If we lift our eyes and look to him, if we remember his promises, if we trust in his care, the care of the good shepherd for his sheep, constantly watching out for, the, for them, protecting and providing for them, we can know the peace and strength his presence brings, helping and supporting us along the road, whatever comes. Yes, we must look to the hills, make sure that we are aware of the dangers. It's no good burying our heads in the sand. But we mustn't let our attention stop there. We must look beyond. To the vaccine, yes, and praise God for it. To the protective restrictions recommended to keep us safe in the meantime. But ultimately beyond those, to our ultimate safety and assurance. And say with the psalmist, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. There is no greater power no greater love and we are assured that he is with us and he will care for us a real source of peace as we journey through these troubled times let's pray father god we thank you for those promises that you are with us that you care for us and that you will keep us you will guard us and protect us lord in these troubled times help us not to focus solely on the problem but to keep our eyes on you and to journey with you and the protection that you provide. Amen. Let's say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're now going to move into a time of prayer. So if you'd like to join in with us as we pray. So now let's pray. And as we do so, let's remember that the one we come to is the maker of heaven and earth, the one who has promised to be with us and to help us, the one who provides us security and our peace. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you for the encouragement given to us through Psalm 121, through those words, Lord, that promise so unequivocally your support and care for us, that you will journey with us through whatever life brings. Lord, as your people today, we pray that you will help us to look to you and not simply at the problems around us, to be a source uh, of hope for others, Lord, as they struggle to see a way forward in this difficult situation. Bless us, Lord, with your presence, with your peace, and with a, a real opportunity, Lord, to reach out to others around us and encourage them on their journey through these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for your church throughout the world and for ourselves here in Leek. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, support us and encourage us through these difficult times and give us, Lord, uh, the opportunities to gather together to worship you, to remember your presence, to remember your power. Father, we thank you for, for Matt and all the work that he's doing at the moment. We pray your healing for him, Lord, as he faces difficulties. And we pray, Lord, for the whole of your church in this place, that we would work together to continue to witness to you and to glorify your name in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Father, we pray for the nations of the world and for our own nation and community. And especially at this time, Lord, we pray for the people of the United States and for their new president, uh, Joe Biden, and their new vice president, Kamala Harris. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that they bring of a new era for those people, an era of peace, an era of unity, of cooperation, of working together, Lord, not just to see themselves through difficult times, but to take a place, uh, their rightful place, Lord, in the world community, helping us all uh, to face difficult times together, to share our resources uh, and the blessings that you bring. We pray for our own government, Lord, and pray for wisdom for them as they try to lead us through these times. We pray, Lord, for those planning and uh, delivering the vaccine program thank you lord that it seems to be going well and we pray lord that you would continue to bless and prosper them in their in their efforts to get the vaccines to all those that need them as quickly as possible we pray lord for those in our national health service overwhelmed by the problems that uh, that we face as a country exhausted mentally frail from all the pressure that they've worked under for so long Lord, by your spirit, be with them and strengthen them and help them, Lord, to, to cope with these difficult situations, to find strength that they never knew they had uh, because it comes from you. And Lord, we pray for our community, for those who live around us, our neighbours, our friends. We pray, Lord, for the opportunities to reach out to them, to support them and encourage them through these difficult days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And our Lord, we pray for those who are sick and who need to know your healing touch today. Lord, there are so many in our country fighting for life um, and struggling to stay healthy through these uh, because of the pandemic. We pray, Lord, for um, especially for John Moss as he continues to recover in hospital. We pray, Lord, for the nurses and doctors caring for him, that they would be able to ease him back to full health again, Lord, and he can soon return home to be with his family. We spend a few moments in quiet just praying for those we know who are sick and need to know your healing touch today. Lord, as we lift our loved ones to you, we pray that you would give them the peace of your presence and the knowledge of your healing power at work in their lives. And we pray too, Lord, for all who mourn at this time. 
those recently bereaved and those remembering the anniversary of a loved one's death. Father, in their sorrow, may they know the comfort and the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we draw our prayers together in the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. We've come to the end of our service today and I hope you've enjoyed what Barry has had to say and share with us. Um, but one thing to say for next week is that next week we're going to try and share communion together over this video. It's going to be a bit unusual but what I ask for you to do in preparation is next week just bring some bread and some wine, whatever you've got at home ready and we will share virtually together in that. Let's finish in a blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>